I don't know. Somehow it seems sufficient to see and hear whatever coming and going is, losing the self to victory of stones and trees, of bending sand-pit lakes, crescent round groves of dwarf pine. For it is not so much to know the self as to know it as it is known, by galaxy and cedar cone, as if birth had never found it and death could never end it. The swamp's slow water comes down gravelly run, fanning the long stone-held algal hair and narrowing royals between the shoulders of the highway bridge. Holly grows on the banks in the woods there, and the cedar's gothic clustered spires could make green religion in winter bones. So I look and reflect, but the air's glass jail seals each thing in its entity. No use to make any philosophies here. I see no god in the holly, hear no song from the snow-broken weeds. Hegel is not the winter yellow in the pines. The sunlight has never heard of trees, surrendered self among unwelcoming forms. Stranger, hoist your burdens, get on down the road. Bees stopped on the rock and rubbed their head parts and wings, rested, then flew on. Ants ran over the whitish, greenish, reddish plants that grow flat on rocks, and people never see, because nothing should grow on rocks. I looked out over the lake and beyond to the hills and trees, and nothing was moving. So I looked closely along the lakeside, under the old leaves of rushes, and around clumps of dry grass, and life was everywhere. So I went on, sometimes whistling. I look for the way things will turn out spiraling from a center, the shape things will take to come forth in, so that the birch tree white, touched black at branches, will stand out, wind glittering, totally its apparent self. I look for the forms things want to come as, from what black wells of possibility how a thing will unfold. Not the shape on paper, though that too, but the uninterfering means on paper, not so much looking for the shape as being available to any shape that may be summoning itself through me, from the self not mine, but ours. The difference... Finding the difference, earth no heavier with me here, will be no lighter when I'm gone. Sum or subtraction equals zero, no change, not to the loss of a single electron spin will net from my total change. Is that horror or opportunity? Should I spurn earth now with mind, toss my own indifference to indifference? invent some other scale that ascends to temporary weight, make something substanceless as love earth can't get to with changeless changing? Will my electrical system numinally at the last moment leap free and weightless? Will it have any way to deal? Or if there is some thinnest weight, what will it join with? How will it neighbor something finer than perception? A difference so opposite to ground, it will have no mass, indifferent to mass. The very longest swell in the ocean, I suspect, carries the deepest memory, the information of actions summarized, surface peaks and dibbles and local sharp slopes of wind storms. With a summary of the summaries and under other summaries, a deeper summary. Well, maybe deeper. Longer, for length here is the same as deep time. So that the longest swell swells least. That is, its effect in immediate events are least perceptible. A pitch to white water rising, say, a millimeter more because of an old and visible presence. And on the ocean floor, an average so vast occurs it moves in a noticeability of a thousand years. Every blip, though, 
of surface and intermediacy moderated into account. I like to go to old places where the effect dwells, summits or seas so hard to summon into mind. Even with natural ones hard to climb or weigh, I go there in my mind, which is, after all, where these things negotiably are, and tune into the wave nearly beyond rise or fall and its staying and hum the constant universal assimilation, the information so packed, nearly silenced with majesty and communicating hardly any action, go there and rest from the ragged and rapid pulse, the immediate threat shot up in a disintegrating spray, the many thoughts and sights unmanageable, the deaths of so many, hungry or mad.